My name is Travis Dillard. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Inflow Communications, and we with me is my Chief Revenue Officer, Mr. Mike Doloff. Say hi, Mike. Hey, everyone. So today um, we're going to be talking about, I would consider three things that are traits of the progressive contact center, the, of the, the current and soon to be contact center of the future that might surprise you. And I like this because, Mike, you were talking on our sales call this morning that I was on, and you, were, you, you had heard some great speakers and heard some great insight at a Calabrio conference that you were at last week. And um, I was fascinated by it. And, you know, we do this every single day. And so I thought, what a great idea to make this a video topic. So tell us a little bit about where you were at. And um, you're going to be doing most of the talking. I apologize in advance. But <laughs> tell us about where you're at and, and some, of the, some of the insights you gained. Sure. Happy to, Travis. Yeah, I was at a Calabrio conference in San Antonio, Texas last week, and Calabrio is a partner of ours. They have worked in the workforce management and workforce optimization space, so they're a technology provider. Um, they have a customer and partner conference every year, as many uh, technology providers do. And um, I like, you know, some of the stuff you get out of these conferences is kind of really product-specific or company-specific, but you get a lot of time hearing from practitioners, right? From contact center directors and customer experience uh, leaders. And so a lot of what I want to, what I'm sharing today is really kind of gleaned from the conversation. Some of them were panels led by these folks sharing what's going on in their organization. And some of it just sort of stitching together these themes that I heard. So uh, I'll share a couple kind of, to me, interesting insights that like Travis said, really think are kind of where the current progressive contact center and where contact centers as a whole are shifting towards um, so the first theme that came up a ton was analytics and analytics is growing like crazy in the contact center. And I think the big shift and everyone's going to say, yeah, analytics, right? It's fancier word for reporting. Well, not exactly, but it's also that this idea that, um, analytics is not just looking in the rear view, looking at historical data. It's getting in the maturity, I think is in organizations getting from that descriptive, what happened in the past to prescriptive looking into the future what can we do uh, with this to influence the types of outcomes we want as a business I think that's the shift that's happening in com the contact center I think part of it is just general maturity of data and analytics with companies as a whole but it's also this idea of oh the contact center analytics shouldn't just live on its own where does this play into the bigger context of our organization so it's fascinating to see that um, there's a lot going on in there well, I was just going to say, what, you, what, what do you need for that, right? You, to, to be predictive, you need lots of data, which we have technologies available now, especially in the cloud, where you can, you can harvest lots of data, touch points within your organization, conversation. I always use conversation analytics as yeah. an example, and AI, artificial intelligence, to get enough accuracy to where you can actually start making some good decisions. You're getting information that's giving you um, the ability to make some, some pretty good decisions about the outcome of your business. Sorry to interrupt there, but no. Was, I mean, in my mind, those are the two things that you need, which are available now. Agreed. I, I'd add a third in that too, which is the roles within the contact center are going you know, to uh, adjust as well. So there was, you know, some of the analysts that literally study and kind of quantify what's going on in the contact center talked a lot about there's new roles, data scientists and other sort of data centric, analytic centric type of roles that are starting to pop up that were never seen before in the contact center. So I think that's uh, that's part of the answer for a lot of organizations in addition to the data and AI side of how to handle this new roles, new people, new skill set for people that are there to do things. So, so that was kind of interesting. Trend one is the analytics. Uh, interesting. Trend two was really a conversation that, that again, wove its way through the whole conference was around really the, what are some of the generational impacts on the contact center that are starting to manifest themselves. And so we've talked a lot about, um, you know, that depending on your organization and what you provide, you know, if you're uh, health insurance, Medicare, Medicaid, you're, you're getting impacted by generational impacts completely different than if you're maybe a, tech, uh, a technology company providing customer service. So certainly there's some variation, but as a whole, a lot of it focused around what's the impact um, as a, a larger percentage of the customer base for contact centers shifts towards millennials and even Generation Z right, which is the generation following millennials. So there's really interesting, I think, um, themes that are ideas that got pulled out of that. One of them is this idea that a lot of the contact centers focusing on that 
have really started to adopt and, and drive through that omni-channel concept. It's always been talked about for the last couple of years. Adoption rate from what we've seen and what the, um, some of the analysts have seen too has been pretty low. It's less than 20% adopted maybe on, on omni-channel. Um, and yet here you have uh, generations that are really sort of expecting, their expectation is omni-channel. It's not forced me into a channel that I don't want to use. Um, a lot of the research has shown too that they're, they're not opposed to trying new channels or new things. They're not opposed to uh, adopting things, but they also really don't like to be forced into one particular channel. So I think there's a huge gap there with a lot of these uh, millennial and Generation Z becoming the customers, becoming the people interacting with contact centers, and contact centers are really not ready to handle that in a way that's going to make for positive experiences. Um, you also have too with Generation Z, they're, they're sort of described as the first digitally native um, generation, right? Their experience is, is completely internet centric, right? Like they don't know an existence without it. And so again, enforces the omni-channel, um, enforces that uh, also um, pretty adaptable and in, in picking up new things, the, the intuitiveness of interacting with support or um, channels needs to be like like us downloading an app right on on our smartphone and engaging that way um, but also I think one of the themes that came out of all this as well was the the customer loyalty side has diminished greatly versus prior generations there was just sort of a deep-seated sort of um, loyalty to brands that cust that that brand loyalty has really diminished with specifically Millennials and Generation Z so um, a lot of the loyalties is like loyalty to the last experience. So that emphasis on the need for consistent, high quality customer experience from centers has to be really high and really good because people's threshold is almost non-existent, right? One bad experience and people are saying, eh, I can go get that service, that product, whatever from someone else. And their loyalty in, in generations as a whole is very low. The other side of that too is not only is it low, but they consider sort of that customer experience process to be a fairly social experience too. So you have people who are willing to um, engage part of its omni-channel, right? So engage on Twitter, for example, or Facebook Messenger or something where they can engage a company or a brand around products and services in a completely different channel. It's social, it's visible, it's public, right? Um, that's completely natural, right? Leaving reviews, um, there's a ton of this sort of social element. It's not just sort of a, a personal me to company engagement. It can be a broader something visible in, in, in the sort of public space. And so thinking through how a contact center handles that and is, is ready for that is really important. So those are some of the generational impacts that were really interesting to see. Um, a lot of changes that are going to be driven, I think, by an, an uptick in, you know, um, gen millennials and Generation Z becoming the, the larger percentage over time of consumers. So pretty fascinating to see that. Um, the last one is the number one issue, drum roll, right, in contact centers that we heard the entire, the entire sessions across conversations everywhere. The number one issue for contact centers that they face, staffing. Again, right, it's hiring, it's uh, onboarding and training, it's retention, it's all of those things around staffing. That's the number one problem. Came up all the time in all sorts of different um, conversations. And, and so we hear that all the time and we go, what is that, right? Is it just nobody wants to have a contact center job? Is it, no, it's, 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 there's so many interesting factors in here, right? I think part of it underlying is you have a large, right now in the, in the US economy, you have a pretty low unemployment rate, right? So you certainly have more of a um, job seekers market. So there has, there's a lot of competition from employers to find employees, so that's part of that. There's there's more stress on that. But I would also say that there was a couple other interesting comments and examples that came up out of this that I think also um, highlight some of the challenges that contact centers are gonna have around this problem for ongoing unless they can find ways to solve it. One of them is um, the gig economy. The gig economy is, right, this idea that we've got lots of jobs that are sort of on demand right from the workforce and a lot of people were that's that's an acceptable part of how they want to work i want to work kind of on my terms uber yeah yeah everyone's you know familiar with sort of like you know 
Rover.com and Uber and like all these different services, right? You can get groceries delivered. Like a lot of the the folks that are part of that, are participating in that, that's that's you know the gig economy, right? Doing it, doing a service for uh, a lot of it's uh, technology centric, right? Has opened up the doors to that. But a lot of um, we've heard some interesting conversations around content centers really struggling to compete with that because they are spending a lot of time and energy to try to bring on uh, a new class of contact center agents or representatives, and they're competing against people saying, well, maybe I don't want to commute in an hour every day, and maybe I don't want to deal with sometimes unpleasant conversations on the phone. Maybe I just want to do something else, and I can still make the money that I need to make. And so it's making centers really think about their value proposition to prospective employers, right? Like, how do we, how do we want to attract people? How do we retain them? Because now com they're competing against not just other contact centers, but they're competing against this, this idea of the gig economy. It's pretty fascinating to see. It is fascinating. It's, it's interesting, you know, because the last two topics are related to just a new generation, new generation of consumers, new generation of employees. That's right. And it, in the, it changes that dynamics fundamentally and, and not in you. I think, I don't know if you mentioned this, but also the leadership, the decision makers in the contact center um, are going to be your, your millennials and people that are, are, uh, are going to be making decisions around digital transformation for their businesses. So hiring customers, everything, everything's changing. It's very yeah. Fascinating to see. So I think, you know, is there, is there a gig economy with contact centers in the future? Maybe, right. Maybe there's a way where that becomes a part of the opportunity for, you know, I mean, there's already certain contact centers, right. That hire up for seasonality. And is there a way that it becomes even more on demand throughout the year? I don't know. But Potential, you right. You have some, I mean, just examples that come to mind. Maybe you have um, a stay at home parent that has a skill set and they want to log in for a few hours and make money, whether it's, um, you know, maybe it's a, an accounting uh, professional um, or it's a, a semi-retired medical professional, like a nurse. We're seeing that. We're seeing that. I mean, that is a gig economy. Those, those are, that's a gig economy plugged into the contact center, right? So it, it's not as far off as you think it is. Totally. Totally agree. I think, you know, I think the, the faster that contact centers can embrace technologies and new ways of thinking about engaging that part of their business, then the better off they're going to be. And I think there's an opens up a whole world of challenges, but also opportunities. It, it but, goes back to, it goes back to what I would say the contact center isn't a room full of people that's that's that day is gone. In fact, I think the word contact center is gone. I think that's obsolete. You know, it's, it's how do you inter how do you interact with your customers? It's, yeah. it's more of a customer engagement strategy. It's not, it's not a room full of people, you know, that drone their way into work and pop headsets in and, and work eight hours a day and drive home. Got to think about it differently. And yeah. you got to think about it technology differently too. Totally. And I, I'd say one area that kind of the last comment I'll make on the staffing side that I think is we're seeing ch shift in, in centers realizing that is the uptick of remote contact center agents, like you said, Travis, right? Like not this idea of everybody's coming in and sitting in the cubicles in an office. The embracing of remote um, workers for contact center has been continuing to uptick we see that more and more with companies we talk to. It was certainly a theme across everyone I talked with there. It was a lot of topics around it. How do you make it work? How do you affect change management on that? How do you make it equitable? How do you transition from everybody in an office to not? Tons of, tons of considerations to make, but I think in part that's an answer to some of the you know, economic, uh, you know, again, good, good economy for workers. Um, you know, there's an attempt for contact centers to make this easier to try to differentiate. Um, you know, there's a lot us of they yeah. tie into our, our remote, you know, we were talking to, we've done the series on, on being a virtual company and I don't think we'd have the people that we have had we had a virtual contact center, you know, yeah. we can att attract and retain great people. So I think if it, if done well and done right, I think it can be a competitive advantage. It could be an asset. Totally. I think that's, and I think that based on, you know, the, the growing economy, based on the gig economy becoming kind of a, a, a challenge for contact centers. I think the remote workers continues to grow from everything I saw. That's something that's certainly a uh, large. And so a lot of, a lot of, you know, I think, again, it kind of ties into some of these things too, right. Of uh, as you're growing a potentially remote contact center workforce, analytics becomes all the more important, right. To measure productivity and how do you engage your employees and um, 
you know, so I think these are all these kind of threads tie together, but it's a fascinating world to be in. Interesting to see that again, staffing is the number one challenge year over year. Always. I'd say the other area too, that I think staffing, um, I lied. I thought that was my last point on, but I remembered one more I want to make, which is I think actually the staffing issue is also where AI and machine learning really can impact the contact center the most sure. rapidly. Cause there's a lot of, uh, you know, again, having, going back to the generational side, um, millennials, Gen Z, they want easy access to information. They want to be able to self-serve when they can, um, having, having the ability to scale up a contact center without having to constantly throw the same amount of bodies as you, as you grow more business, being able to handle things through conversational intelligence and things like that, that can, and, and chat bots and all these things that can help people self-serve on the stuff they need to self-serve is a way that you can get out of the rat race of constantly having to hire to handle increasing interaction. We've heard from a lot of companies we work with that, that they're, you know, every single year, yes, they're growing clients, but they're also growing interactions with customers um, at a rate that's unsustainable with, with hiring projections. They, they can't staff enough for them and they have to come up with another way to handle these. And that's, I think where AI and automation has a ton of potential for the context center is handling that amount of volume of work, making it simpler for customers, self-service options, um, and iterating that process so that it improves customer experience, but is also decreasing the need for human intervention on every single interaction. Well, I think a lot of the stuff you talk about AI, machine learning, I don't think it's going to be optional. It's not going to be optional if you want to continue to grow your, your organization and thrive and subsequently enter cloud. You're not going to get conversation analytics and artificial intelligence and chatbots and machine learning and, and predictive analytics and all these types of things by putting your contact center on premise. I'm sorry. I'm just going to throw it out there. I think that that's where really why we're seeing such a massive adoption in the cloud when it comes to contact center. Yeah. Agreed. So that's some insights from the trends we saw. It's, um, it's always good to kind of do a brain dump and share those because um, it's fascinating. You know, we're, we're in the weeds of it every day, but being stepping back and seeing, wow, what's really going on, not just in my little bubble, but in this broader sphere of customer experience, contact center. That's what I picked out of it and wanted to share. So thanks for Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you, Travis, for yeah. chatting with me today on it. And yeah. um, we'll turn it back to you for anything else. Okay. Nope. That's it. I, like I said, we're, we're in it every single day, swinging the hammer and it's even fascinating for us to, to get some insight on that. So interesting stuff. Thanks for sharing, Mike. Have you a bet. great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.